This video will walk you through running generalized least squares as a correction for heteroskedasticity. And I'm going to show you this correction in both SPSS and Excel. So we're using the data set FOC sales, which gives us 265 months worth of, worth of sales data for a fiber optic company. Our dependent variable is sales and our independent variable is months. And previously we have shown that uh, this regression is heteroskedastic in months because uh, we have that cone shape pattern in our residuals as the number of months increases um, the sales the amount of the residual of sales starts to spread out um, in a cone shape pattern so this solution can be done for both simple and multiple regression anytime you find heteroskedasticity in any of the variables um, the only problem is you can only correct for heteroskedasticity in one variable at a time. Now, in this case, we only have one independent variable, so it's not a big deal. But when you're actually going through and running your regressions, when you have multiple independent variables, you're going to have to graph the residuals individually for each of the independent variables in order to see which of them is causing the heteroskedasticity problem and then use that one to do the correction. So here I have my data. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new correction variable. So I'm going to go into transform and compute, oh, sorry, transform and compute variable. Okay, so I have some other work that was up in here, which is not what I'm working on. Okay, so the first thing I want to, I want to create this correction variable. My correction variable is going to be 1 over the square root of the heteroskedastic variable. So let's go over here into my numeric expression, 1 divided by, then go into um, arithmetic, and I want to select the square root and bring over my independent variable, which has heteroskedasticity, which is months, and click OK. So go back to my data viewer, and you see I have created that correction. Then to actually run GLS, I'm going to go into Analyze, and then regression and linear. I'm going to select my dependent variable as sales, my independent variable as months, and then down here this correction, I'm gonna select that as my weighted least squares weight. Now here, I'm assuming that the heteroskedasticity is proportional to one over the square root of x. Um, and this is just a general assumption that you're going to see you know, happening very often with GLS. However, newer versions of SPSS will offer you the option to actually figure out what the correct weighting scheme would be. So, you know, how that heteroskedasticity is proportional to that independent variable. Um, and the way you would have done that, so here I'm just going to click OK and it's going to give me my output. Um, and so I'll go down to my coefficients and this is the corrected. I can, you know, read this as the this is my beta 0, this is my beta 1, so for each additional month, sales are predicted to increase by roughly 72, and then I have my, I did not select 95% confidence interval, but I can go back in there in my analyze, um, in my regression, and make sure I, you know, in, that, in those statistics, that I get the confidence intervals of my estimates, and I can run that again, um, and I would have that, that bounding in there as well. So I can just interpret this regression and I'm absolutely fine. There's nothing else I need to do. Now, if um, in, in other forms of SPSS, when I go into regression, there would be something here that says, um, that, that says something about, you, you know, weighted weight estimation or something like that and you would actually go through and run a weight estimation on the independent variable however our version of SPSS that we have access to is not allowing us to do that okay so let me show you the same thing in Excel let's bring this up 
Now, in Excel, we're going to follow the same logic. We are going to create a new column, which is going to be 1 over the square root of our heteroscedastic variable. So 1 over the square root of months. Creative title for my new column, I know. Okay, so that is going to be 1 divided by square root of months. Okay, and click, copy that down. Now I need to correct for x and y by dividing them by that square root of x or multiplying them by 1 over that square root of x. So corrected months and corrected sales. Okay, so corrected months is equal to months times 1 over the square root of months. And bring that down. And I'll do the same for corrected sales is equal to sales times 1 over the square root of sales. I'm sorry, 1 over the square root of months. So I'm making this correction here. And now I'm going to go into data, data analysis and run my regression here. So data analysis, regression. Okay, click OK. My Y range is my corrected sales, so I'll highlight that data. Come on. Bring that down. My X range is going to be up, 1 over the square root of months and my corrected months together. And that 1 over the square root of months, that's going to serve as my new intercept because I'm going to need to suppress the intercept to be 0 and that will be my new intercept. Bring this all the way down. Sorry, this is taking so long. Okay, um, so select constant equals zero. Okay, then I've just gone ahead and run my regression. Now, I had to select constant equals zero because that one over the square root of months, that is going to be my new intercept. So my corrected intercept. So now I would say, um, you know, I can just run, do my interpretation normally for each additional month of sales. I'm sorry, for each additional month, sales are expected to increase by roughly 73. And um, if sales, if, if months are zero, sales will be 4,662. So you'll notice that these observations are, you know, the numbers are going to be slightly off whether you ran SPSS or whether you ran Excel. Um, but, you know, that's just a function of how it's going through and actually performing that weight calculation and the suppression of that intercept. Um, in general, but, you know, they're going to be roughly consistent, so both of those are fine. Just make sure that when you run that regression, you remember to suppress that intercept, um, to set that intercept to be zero, and then to include the one over the square root of your heteroscedastic variable, and that will be your new intercept. Even if you, you know, have multiple independent variables and you are going to need to correct all of them for the independent variable that was heteroscedastic, and then always remember to include that column that has 1 over the square root of the heteroscedastic variable because that is going to be the one that you are going to use as your intercept.